Welcome to 3CI video series. My name is Ron Shaw and I'm going to be your uh, video professor for a sh video about dynamic net. Now many of my um, YouTube channel uh, subscribers have uh, requested additional videos. So I'm going to do a video here on how to configure dynamic net. Now, component two. Information in this video is based on the, the software and hardware versions. I have two Cisco 2600 series routers. Uh, my Cisco IOS version is a um, is the uh, IK9, which is the security software version 12.3. Now, it's important to remember that the information in the video was created from devices in a specific lab environment, so all IP addresses are not are not to be used in a live network. Could, and you must understand that um, that the potential impact of any commands that you're going to be issuing here. Now, steps for configuring deployment. deploying it. Now, what we have to do is we have to define what you're trying to accomplish with NAT. Am I doing static NAT, dynamic NAT, or NAT overload? Now, this video is just going to be uh, pertain to dynamic NAT. And then, of course, the last part of this is we want to verify the NAT operation. Now, for my lab topology, this is how we have it set up. In here, I have my local host, which is the host I'm currently working on, and it's sitting on the 192.168.1.0 network using their default subnet mat. Now, this is one of the um, IP, uh, private IP addresses defined in RFC 1918. The other two is the, is the 10.0.0.0 and the 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255. Now, my, from my router to the ISP, which will be simulating this in a back-to-back -back connection, uh, we're going to simulate that the um, ISP has given us a Class C block of the 201.16.16.0. Now, remember, this is only for my lab. Do not use this on the outside unless this is truly the uh, IP address issued to you by your ISP. Now, to simulate a web server out there on the internet, I've sat there and I've got a um, web server set up and it uses the IP address 65.16.16.2. Now, again, remember, these are only training, uh, training addresses. Do not use them in a live environment. Now, let's look at the steps for configuring dynamic NAT. It is a four-step process. Now, step one is we're going to have to define an access control list. Now, what's the purpose of this list? Now, this access list is going to be used or tell the um, NAT uh, function what IP addresses to translate to one of your public available IP addresses. So, in here, it's just a it's just a standard access list, and it looks something like this example here. Access list one. So remember, addresses from one to um, 99 will be the standard IP access list range. We'll give it a permit statement, and we're going to def and we're going to use the 192.168.1.0, and then it's net uh, wildcard math. Second step of this, we're going to define a pool of addresses to be used for dynamic NAT allocation. Kind of think is this like a DHCP address pool. It's going to sit there and take the source address on the inside. And it's going to sit there and say, all right, since I can't use the source on the, um, on the public IP address, I've got to translate it to a, uh, an address that can be used on the outside. So this is just like a pool of addresses that's going to rewrite that source to a public IP address that's allowed on the internet. The next step is we're going to take that access list and we're, and we're going to link it to the NAT pool that we just created. And the command looks like this. IP NAT inside source. We're telling it what we're we using our source with, and we're saying list one. We're going to link this to our access list. And then since we're going to be using pool, I'm going to use the uh, keyword pool and then I'm going to use my pool. Now this is case sensitive. The final step is we got to define our interfaces as an inside or outside. Now, since I am using um, 
um, a Cisco router that has fast Ethernet interface and that's where my LAN's connected to. I'll sit there and use the fast Ethernet 00 and I'm going to define it as inside. Now to match my topology I've got my serial interface that connects to the ISP router which is on serial interface 0 slash 0 and then I'll sit there and define it as my outside interface. Now the overall commands or the complete command list looks something like this. This is the example. Uh, access list 1, permit 192.168.1.000.255, and then so on. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to the router and actually configure it. So, I've restarted my router, cleaned up all the configurations from the last lab, and I'm going to go in there and enable. Now, enable is going to bring me into the privileged exec mode. Now, as you notice, I did, was not prompted to do a password, and this is only for training. Do not recommend it, or will not recommend it in a live environment. So let's go config. Yep, got to spell config right. Config T. I'm going to do the terminal here. Now, let's define my access list. So access list, I'm just going to use one, and then I'm going to define the IP address of my internal or my inside host. To in here. And it goes like this. This is my network address essentially saying, hey, take the entire network and allow any host that has a range from 1 to 254 to come through. Now, oh, I forgot something very important in there, people, and that is that I have to get a permit statement. You know, not in here. So, now. Next thing to do is let's define our pool. So the command will look like this. IP NAT pool. And then I'm going to give it a name my pool. You can use any word here. Just I'm using this as an example. And then we're going to define it to or, or create a range of addresses that is going to be used in the pool. So 201, 16, 16. 50. Now this is the uh, this is that address block that my ISP is giving me. They give me a block uh, a CIDR block of 24. So I'm going to create a pool of addresses of 100 addresses to be used by my inside host to communicate on the outside. Now we'll use the keyword net mask, and then we'll define the subnet mask. Whoop. All right. Next step is take this access list and link it to this pool and the command looks like this IP NAT and inside because I'm going to say my inside host source we're going to link it to access list one now this number must match this number then we're going to say since we're using a pool up oh, let me put a space there pool and then it's got a matches case sensitive Enter. now let me show you something here real quick had this been a um, a overload or, or a path then I would use the keyword overload here but since we're not doing um, dynamic NAT, or excuse me a uh, NAT overload we'll just enter this now that takes care of the first three commands. I've got my access list, I've got my pool, and I've linked them together. Now, I've got to define step four, which is define the NAT router's interfaces as either an inside or outside. So, let me go in here and let's get to the FA0 slash 0. Since this is my inside, this is where my pub, uh, excuse me, my private IP addressing or, or my host on my LANs reside. Uh, let's see, IP, NAT, inside. Now, let's define my outside interface. IP NAT outside. Alright, let me go back. Let me do a show run. Make sure and verify it. And let's see. Let's go through here. And let's go down to the first IP, to the interface. Okay, inside. Looks good. My serial interface looks good. Let me go down to my uh, pool, starting IP address, 50 to 150, gives me a 100 IP address pool. My source looks good, match to this access list. Enter. Now, uh, let's, let's go ahead now and let's bring up a web browser and see if I can actually get to that host. 
Now what I'm going to do is, let's go in here and let's type its IP address in. And that's the IP address. We'll do a control F5 just to make sure that it is working. Yep, everything looks good. Now let's do some verification here to see our NAT translation pool. And that's show IP NAT translation. Now in here, as you can see, the host on the inside was was given an IP address of 201.16.50. Now that looks good. Uh, everything looks like it's working properly. So now the last and final step is I'm going to save my configurations. Two ways you can do it. I can do WR for write mem or I can just issue the command copy run start. And I'll tell it to save it to my uh, startup configuration files and everything is good. All right. I hope you enjoyed this little short video on dynamic NAT configuration and hope to see you back here in the future with um, uh, and viewing of many of my other exciting videos. Thank you. Have a great day.